South Africa's aerospace and defense industry has grown in leaps and bounds over the years to rival a global competition. That's why when Newsroom Africa received an invitation to tour this Milko factory, the biggest drone factory in Africa, we accepted to see also the production of the Milko 380, Africa's biggest drone. While Milko is world-renowned for weapons systems, cybersecurity and land operations, its success on the 380 drone, better known as a UAV, an unmanned aerial vehicle, has been widely celebrated. This is because the company has managed to find skilled individuals in South Africa, and this facility in Cape Town has 400 people taking turns on shifts to work on improving the drone, which is now in its commercial stage. So behind me at uh, this uh, mill uh, core uh, facility are uh, engineers uh, from uh, different uh, disciplines. That is uh, propulsion engineers, uh, systems engineers, software engineers, working on uh, different uh, types of offerings from Milco. But it is the Milco 380 that is the flagship of this uh, particular uh, company. I'm joined now by Daniel Duplessy. Daniel, thank you so much uh, for your time. Let's talk about uh, this uh, particular milestone, uh, the Milco 380. Uh, a lot of people, when they think about uh, the defense systems industry, the security industry, they're thinking only military use, only gun use. But there's a lot of applications uh, for this uh, particular Milco 380. So the Milco 380, as you rightly said, is currently the flagship product of our company. It is the largest UAV to be produced on the African continent. Um, it has an endurance of more than 35 hours, flies for more than 4,000 kilometers, and it is designed to be a multi-role type of UAV application or drone, as it's commonly known. It is specifically used in the military industry to do ISR operations, essentially going into intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, gathering as much information as possible, feeding it back to a central command base, and then deploying strategies that are well thought out uh, in conjunction with this information as well to be executed. This makes it versatile to be used not, as you mentioned, just by military, but also by various other agencies, including the South African Police, the Border Management Authority, and various other stakeholders that have a role to play that need technology like this to actually account for the problem that they might be facing. How important for any country it is economically, uh, for economic growth, uh, to protect its uh, you know, resources, natural and otherwise, uh, to have systems when it comes to security systems, when it comes to cyber, when it comes to air, when it comes to land. Tell us more about that. So Milko as a company, our slogan is air, land, sea and cyber. Those are the four divisions mainly that we focus on, although we focus on the defense and security solutions and systems in general. Right? And I think it is important to note that aside from the division we're looking at now, which is our unmanned aerial systems, we have other divisions which also assist government entities in providing armored vehicles, naval systems such as vessels, cybersecurity solutions, as well as weapon systems to defense forces in South Africa and around the continent as a whole. It is essential for economic growth to take place in a country to give the perception that you have a stable country with reasonable governance and that attra attracts a lot of foreign investment. Now, South Africa has a lot of foreign companies operating within its confinement and within its borders, and we would like to keep these companies safe and suitable for these kinds of investments to stimulate the economy going forward. That being said, we also need to address some of the concerns we have at the moment that are posing a threat to our country's safety and our sovereignty. And essentially, the, these types of equipment and solutions that we provide could assist various different government entities within their respective roles to be able to act in their domains of operation, ensure a safe environment that will also in, in return boost the economy for foreign investors to come and invest companies, leads to job creation and a safer community. And I think that is the primary focus for all of us. We want to have a country that is prosperous, that attracts a lot of foreign investment, boosts the economy, creates jobs, 
and is safe for everyone to live in. And I think it's a primary focus of our company, being a South African company, to focus on that. Although we deal internationally on a, on a larger scale with many different company, uh, countries and many, many different government institutions, our primary focus and our target will always be South Africa because we are proudly South African. Let's talk about being proudly South African. Uh, what has uh, this uh, milestone uh, uh, done uh, to uh, the uh, company Milko, its uh, stature amongst uh, the many other um, companies that are in the same sector in the country? So Milko as a company is among a few companies that are actually world-renowned for the type of technologies they develop specifically in the defense industry. The South African defense industry, under the association of the African Maritime and Defense uh, Organization, which is a government entity that oversees more than, I think, 160 companies operating within this domain. So Africa's defense industry is quite coherent in the sense that many of the technologies being developed do not necessarily overlap, but actually complement the systems as a whole, which makes an export requirement on a larger scale a huge interest uh, to many investors in the country and uh, externally as well. There's one thing about this sector, however, it requires a number of skills, such skills that are in short supply in South Africa, from aeronautical engineers to systems, software, and aircraft maintenance engineers. What does that mean for the growth of the sector and what this particular industry requires? When it comes to operating these UAVs, we need some experienced pilots to actually be able to fly this. They have to have a good understanding of flight theory, manned hours in an airplane that actually understand how an airplane would work typically. From there on, we can retrain them on the, how the system works, what is conventional and unconventional in terms of operating this UAV remotely, because it's a completely different feeling, it's a completely different mode of operation, with the same background knowledge. Uh, of how to fly a plane and the basic flight theory behind it. It's also very important that if people have good radio communication skills, often you have to communicate with various different radio towers and various different environments. So it is important that they have that prior knowledge as well. When it comes to training, we essentially have quite a few people that have either experience from a military environment operating UAVs or from a, an instructor type of environment operating and training people how to fly an airplane. And I think combining these two both on an instructor and previous experience uh, side, we are then able to train any, any Air Force or any entity in operation of this UAV, even if they do not have the prior knowledge, uh, taking them through flight school and then understanding the system, flying continuously on a simulator and then also going into the field and supporting them uh, when they are doing their first flight operations as well. We are one of only seven countries in the world that has this technology but it can be applied in so many other fields not only border not only on our coast but in in other fields as well in the private sector yeah it's actually very true that you're saying that it's one of seven countries in the world now officially south africa is not uncommon to the use of drones um, but one of seven countries in the world that have the internal locally developed capability to manufacture drones of this size and scale and I think that's a very significant feat for the country, pertaining specifically to the skill set that is still residing within the country, but also to our company in attributing uh, to that milestone. That being said, our country is not unfamiliar with security threats and with various different kinds of issues being posed both locally and internationally and regionally as well. The, this type of technology actually is a force multiplier, enabling various different stakeholders to make informed decisions in real time and then apply their very limited resources on the ground. For example, I mentioned already the intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities, but the fact that this UAV flies for 35 hours essentially means that the Border Management Authority can patrol over vastly different terrains, more than 4,700 kilometers of total land border, continuously on a 24-7 basis looking for various illegal activities that might be happening in and around our borders. Same goes for the maritime and the economy. With the oceans economy, various fleets are being rerouted across the African continent to resupply and restock on their, on their voyages. And essentially, it is important that we also establish a safe economic zone with a reduced risk of maritime incidents or pirate activities, 
where a system like the Milko 380 outperforms most of its uh, competition in specifically monitoring using very highly advanced radar systems to identify possible threats, recognize patterns, and then send that information back to command base to be able to react adequately as well. Uh, we had a story in South Africa a couple of months ago where there were illegal training facilities uh, and uh, you, you, you need to perhaps find out, send a fact-finding mission of what is happening. And this, just like in the movies, it can fly high and actually take uh, um, um, in infrared uh, uh, pictures. Can it do that so that you, you do the reconnaissance and you get data and information about what's happening there? Yeah, it's essentially what it was designed for, right, is, is reconnaissance operations. And you're correctly saying that specific incident, um, there were many discussions and it was surveyed and, and monitored for a long period of time using the technologies that were available. And I think it is important to note with this type of system and the camera systems and, and uh, EOI, or electronic optic and infrared sensors that it has on board, it has the capability for day and nighttime operations, meaning you can pick up on different wavelengths of infrared, either activity, movement, and as well as using radar technology also identify some things and some movements, recognize some patterns uh, in all weather conditions. And that's an important aspect. When you are using an aircraft, you are very dependent on the weather to be able to visually see what's going on. So therefore we need to rely on modern technologies to be able to gather as much information as possible, irrespective of the weather conditions. Um, when we look at the current internal issues we have in the country. We have situations like that and a very good example, um, but also some of the illegal mining activities that are happening across, across the country where this type of technology, if used properly, can provide vital information back before then sending the very limited resources we have in terms of men and personnel on the ground uh, to respond to those potential threats. It's just like in the movies, as you can uh, hear. It's, it's so impressive that uh, South Africa has uh, this uh, type of technology and uh, just a, f a handful of countries are actually doing this. But at any given moment, because you, you, you actually are flying this quite regularly uh, and testing it out. Yeah, so we are currently testing it. I'm not able to disclose exactly yeah, where. where. <laughs> but um, we are currently testing it and implementing continuous upgrades to it as, as, as much as possible. We have a few clients already that are expecting delivery of the first system. So as I mentioned, it's no longer a development thing, it's no longer testing, it's actually upgrading the system and in introducing new features and capabilities within the UAV and the external supporting uh, systems that comes with that as well. We have big ambitions, right? As a South African company, as a defense company, we have quite a few ambitions in becoming one of the top 100 defense companies in the world. Now to achieve that, if you look at the comparing companies in that sphere, they have more than, I think, 2,000 to 10,000 employees. So we will continue building new products, developing new things, finalizing this whole thing, supporting it on an AME level, software level, aeronautical level, operations level, pilots, there's also a huge shortage of that. Um, but essentially, as we branch out into more of the similar technologies, expanding in our market, and we will need more people to actually support this. The future of South Africa's defense industry seems to be thriving. It needs skills for it to be sustainable and grow. For Newsroom Africa on Channel 405, I'm Kwanim Banjwa in Cape Town. <laughs>